We have Garrett here. Yay! <laughs> um, so every every time we have a workshop, I try to have international themed snacks. So just for Garrett, I have these mango candies I got in India a couple weeks ago, and then these Hello Panda chocolate cream filled cookies that I grew up with in Hawaii. They're little Japanese snacks, um, and they're all for Garrett. <laughs> Right. Me. So this might not be as long as the previous sessions, just because it's between the two of us. But credit cards. Alrighty. As soon as this computer gets started back up. Okay. Oh, something happened. There we go. All right. So with credit cards, that's one of the most common questions that I get asked about what kind of travel card I should get or how can I travel on miles and it's a little bit of a little bit complicated it takes some research on your part um, depending on a lot of things based on where you want to go what airlines you like and what kind of travel you want to do so I just wanted to cover the very very basics about traveling so we're not going to get into um, like anything to do with deep churning tricks, or like how, how to like game the mile system to earn as much as possible. This is just basic, how do I get started with travel credit cards? Um, so first of all, you need to, I was telling you earlier, you have to figure out uh, whether or not it's a good idea to travel credit card. So in order to get a travel credit card, uh, typically you have to have, um, have credit already. So if you have never ever had a credit card in your life, most likely you won't get approved for the, the miles cards, like the 50,000 Delta or Southwest credit card sign-up bonuses. You typically have to have some established credit before the banks will approve you for that. So anyway, um, when thinking about getting, whether or not you should get a travel credit card, um, you, there are a handful of questions you should ask yourself, and this is not an exhaustive list. I just put together some some ideas and questions that I heard a lot, things that I found from my favorite travel website. So um, I'll just start off with this. Um, there are two and uh, maybe three websites that I would highly recommend for beginners wanting to get into the travel credit card um, game or whatever you want to call it. Uh, the first one, the first one that I ever read that got me into all of this is Million Mile Secret. Uh, most of their posts are don't read from it very much anymore. They have prob probably the most detailed, accurate, and um, unbiased information in the sense that they will always tell you what the best deal is um, no matter what, and they won't try to get you to you know, use their link so that they can earn money and earn commission for it. Um, million Mile the most amazing website to start off with. And then Mile Value has, I think, equally good information, milevalue.com. And they it's, it's a little bit more uh, wordy, and it's, it's a little more detailed. Um, so even though it is a beginner blog, um, you, I think they, they have a lot, a lot more of their posts are geared toward um, people who know what they want in, in the travel industry, in the travel game. And then the third one that that I would recommend, but it's, it's thepointsguy.com. That one has a lot of beginner information, but it's also not so. Uh, they have a ton of advertisement on that site now because they've gotten really popular. Um, so just be aware of that when you go on on that website. So the first question that you should ask, so Garrett, um, be thinking about what your credit and spending habits are. So do you um, pay your bills off every month? Do you um, spend more than you earn or not? Like, like think, think about those things and think about whether or not it's a good idea for you I to. spend more than, my, than I earn, I wouldn't be able to do that for very long. <laughs> yeah, for a lot of people just end up paying a lot of, uh, of interest and mm -hmm. end up in debt. Yeah. So, so you don't want to, if you have problems in that area, you don't want to get a travel credit card. Um, and can you handle additional credit? So some people, um, even though they have maybe one card, they if they have another, they're just going to spend what they're allowed. 
or they're going to think that they have more money than they do just because you have that credit available. Mm -hmm. If that's you, you don't want to get a travel credit card. Um, another important question is, what is your credit score or credit history? Now, you don't need to tell me that. <laughs> but, Mine's good. Mine's good. Good, good. Yeah. Uh, but you want to be aware of how credit works, how credit cards affect your credit score and things like that. Um, every application for a credit card, travel or not, uh, will set you back two to three points on your credit score. Mm -hmm. So you take a ding every time you get any sort of hard credit pull, and a credit card application is a hard pull on your account. Um, however, the two to three points will come back over time. And sometimes the value of having a credit card will actually give you a higher score based on, you know, it might boost your um, credit ratio, your spending to credit limit ratio. Mm -hmm. So if you have, you know, 20 percent used on out of your overall credit line, getting a new card might make that 20 percent go down to 10 or 15, and then your credit score will go up. So you just have to be aware of how that works. Um, there is a really good website. Um, this blog post on mile value, um, I'll pull it up for you here. It was posted on April 14th, 2015. There's introduction to travel credit cards on mile value. Um, I'll show you this here. It's kind of hard to see over there. So this, you can read it on your own. The most important section, I'll post this on my blog uh, again, links to all these websites and all the information I'm talking about here. Uh, what is it? Tippiestravels.blogspot.com. It's a uh, a graphic on how credit cards affect your credit score. It explains what a FICO score is, and, and you can do a little research of that on your own. But the most important thing here is it breaks down what comprises your credit score. So it shows that 35% of your credit score is payment history. Do you pay your score, you pay your credit cards on time and your bills on time? 30% uh, of your score is based on the amount you owe. And that is typically measured by you know, the ratio of how much credit you have to how much you spend. And, and I've also learned over time Available credit that, to, to balance your yes, and it's not just your overall like, oh, out of the four credit cards I have, I'm only spending 10%. If that 10% is on one card and you it's have like zero. 80% of the yeah, card. Yeah, if, if you have like that 10% that of your score is like, and even 50%, 50 to 60% of your credit limit on one card and you have no spending on your other cards, that will negatively affect your credit. Hmm. Yeah, because they look at each credit line. And I've had, like I monitor my credit score. You can monitor it. Um, you're yeah. entitled to one free credit score a year by the federal government. Um, not credit score, credit report. report. And that report tells you if you paid on time, if there are any dings, but it doesn't tell you your actual score. Pro um, tip, it's not freecreditreport.com, that's some sort of <laughs> bait and switch nonsense. It's called it is annualcreditreport.com. And the smart thing to do is No, go ahead. This is what this is for. The um, yeah. smart thing to do is um, get one of your reports from each of the uh, major mm -hmm. uh, credit bureaus. Credit bureaus. Yeah, there are three. Um, at four month intervals. So you mm -hmm. get a snapshot of your credit. At, uh, at at even intervals over the mm -hmm. year uh, for free. It's mm -hmm. like uh, Experian, uh, TransUnion, mm -hmm. and then Experian, TransUnion, and what's the third one? Intellius. No, that's something else. TransUnion, Equifax. Equifax. There we are. Yes, Equifax. Um, what was I going to say about that too? Credit scores. Oh, so a good way to keep track of your credit they have there are two websites that are not correlate your credit for people from so each credit uh, each of the three credit um, bureaus. bureaus will have a different score for you uh, but there's there are two websites that that are very useful to manage your account in that way if you can't afford to pay for your real actual credit score credit karma, um, credit karma and credit sesame mm -hmm. Um, absolutely free to sign up, but you have to give them your personal information, so just be aware of that. <laughs> Make sure your passwords are really good, but if you're not willing to give out your personal information, then, then, then don't do it. But I think signing up for at least one of those is very useful to keep track of your score. 
And also um, banks, that's what I was gonna say. If you have um, a checking account or a credit card with a certain bank, um, a lot of times these days, those bank credit uh, credit scores from the industries. I have a Discover It card that does that. It gives you not FICO score. Mm -hmm. or not. Really yeah, convenient. and I have I have um, I have the uh, Barclay Bank um, American American Airlines credit card, and that one gives me a score each month. And I also have the Barclays Arrival card, which is a cash back based on travel card, and that one will also give me where I want it, and it keeps track of it, so you can see a little chart of how you're doing over time. Um, so that's also very useful. So um, that uh, do credit card issuers do they pretty universally use your FICO score? I know some types of of lenders prefer the Vantage score these days. Yeah. Um, See, it depends on the bank. Okay. And if you do a little research online, you can tell which banks are going to pull from which which uh, bureau. Like Chase always pulls from I don't know if it's Experian or TransUnion. I think and Barclay Card also pulls from the same. Um, but sometimes they pull from TransUnion. Um, certain banks like to pull from from one of the three most of the time. So you can you can figure that out and, and try if you do a little research online and where your credit is going. Okay. Yeah, so that, that's kind of you can put down. Um, 10% of your score is based on the types of credit used. So this this is uh, your variety of credit, whether you have loans, um, credit cards, uh, car loans, anything like that, student loans, that's your diversity of credit, so that's 10%. So I, I have student loans from USC plus credit cards. I don't really have anything else there, but some have a, like in-store, it's not like a store credit card, but they'll like loan you a line of credit to buy something like mm -hmm. in Best Buy or something. I guess Best Buy has a credit card now, but certain certain companies will loan you, mm -hmm. like PayPal will do that without giving you a credit card. They'll well, issue, same, think, issue you a line of credit. I think Amazon is trying something like that. Too. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, and regular credit cards are viewed differently by these by these banks. I mean, in terms of take, you know, take a credit ratio, yes, uh, it's just different, it, okay. and it, it contributes to the, the good uh, a good uh, variety. It, okay. it contributes okay. to the diversity of your cards. So I do my very first credit card is a Macy's store card, and so that increases the age of my credit history. And that's the next one up here. Fifteen percent of your FICO score is based on your length of credit history. So that's the average age of your credit. And even right now, I am almost twenty-six, and I've had a credit card from the time I was, like, from the month I turned eighteen. Mm -hmm. So it's been what is that? Eight, eight years, years of credit, and still that's not enough to put me in the really high ranks of credit, just because of my age. Yeah. You know, the length of credit. I can't compare to you know yeah, forty, have, fifty year old you know people in the in the height of their careers that make a lot of money and earn a lot of you know have a lot of credit and things like that. Like, uh, and that's just something you can't avoid. But the sooner you get a credit card, whether or not you use it, the the, the longer your credit history will be. And store cards are great because they usually don't have an annual fee. Mm -hmm. Although it's good to be aware that they typically have a higher. Right. Uh, They're not good to carry that. No, not good at all. So usually, Don't like carry balances, people. <laughs> like uh, Victoria's Secret is a great store card that I have as a girl <laughs> because they send you a lot of like coupons so in the mail and things like that, and free like free lotions and, and that sort of thing. But with those kinds of store cards, you can you know use your credit card there and then pay it off immediately with your debit card or even a credit card right away. Mm -hmm. So that's one good way. And this is like it's really hard to get your first card these days ever since the recession. I got my card like just before the recession hit mm -hmm. in 2007. But uh, my little sister had the hardest time applying for her first credit card when she turned mm -hmm. 18 because people would deny her because she didn't have credit history. But how could she get credit history if no one would issue her a line mm -hmm. of credit? And she just kept running into that problem. Uh, we found her just at the mall here in, in Orem at the University Mall. Um, it's called Maurice's. It's a clothing store for women, but they apparently have a student card. So since she was a student at University of Utah, um, her credit, student credit, like worrying that she's never had credit before. Offer that to you. A good another where 
that's had issue got a credit card issue in the drew on one his credit accounts great never told me um I when I got my first first uh free what is the Army dating back to when I was 13 years old somehow. Um, so, you know. Yeah, that's magic. Getting, that, that doesn't happen anymore. No, no, gosh. <laughs> yeah, you well, have to be 18 typically. Yeah. Um, I don't know how that works. I don't know. I really don't know. If, if that's still a bad I'm sure you have kids, you know, get a credit card issue for them. Name on one of your accounts if possible, and just don't tell them about it. <laughs> and don't use it. <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> yeah, well, that's that's good. So you got lucky there. I suppose. Yeah. I did, but so you're ahead of most of us, you know, adults that got it at 18 or so. <laughs> A little bit. Yeah. No. All right. Um. And so the last 10 percent of your FICO score that shows on this chart here in my body is that your score is based on new credit. So whether or not you've been keeping up and maintaining. Your credit as you get older, you know, like okay, have you bought a car? Have you really? You need it can be a dangerous situation, and most people would prefer to pay in cash. Like I used to only pay, um, pay in cash until I figured out all the travel stuff. But I did have that Macy's card that helped me out a lot. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, and so this 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 uh, block. Yeah, I can't see that on there at all. Yeah, so definitely read that on mile value. I'm just gonna. Sorry. Okay, internet's really slow. I'm not gonna do that now. All right. Um, another good, good website to read, or um, yeah, a good web page to read is Million Mile Secrets. And they have this blog post called New to Miles and Points. Start that one has links to a bunch of their different uh, different blog posts that talk about credit and things like that. It's their beginner's guide to my, miles and points. And, and when you go to their homepage, there are a bunch of like icons you can click on the top like menu bar. And it's kind of in the middle. It just says new to miles and points. So you just click that and it'll take you to that link. Um, and that's a pretty in about uh, they talk about what Miles has done for them and what their readers have said, and then they go into specific details about about their uh, their cards. Um, one of the most useful um, sets of information that you can find here is their list here. It says you should not get a credit card if you don't pay your bills on time or pay your balance in full, have a credit score of at least 700. We'll talk about that later. Uh, pay attention or challenges. And you also shouldn't get into this hobby if you plan to take out any major loan in the next two years. Mortgage, car, student loan. I think student loans don't matter so much because that's more based on your, your FAFSA, based on my experience. But you're more, if you're going to take out a mortgage or a car loan in the near future, um, that can be, you just want to be careful with how many um, hard pulls you have on your credit because they definitely look at that and that can negatively affect you. So you can still get into it, but you just don't want to, you know, do every three months like some people do. So if that's you're not planning really on doing that, then that's fine, but that's keep track of. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, at, at the height of when I first got into it, I was doing, you know, one or two cards every three months. But we'll talk about that in a second. Watching the credit score tip down. You know, like Actually up. Uh, so so oh, here's, really? here's another thing I was going to mention later. Um, it's interesting, I didn't know this, but once you have had, I think the number is like 1021. Mm -hmm. 1920 or 21 lines of credit in your name at any point in time, whether or not you canceled the card, um, each student loan, like each semester, if you got, if you have an unsubsidized Stafford loan, each one of those counts as a line of credit. So, with however many semesters of college I had, I had a handful of lines there. Um, I had some, a credit card I closed at Bank of America because they're a really crappy bank, <laughs> um, at least from my experience. <laughs> 
come in, you know, the Macy's store card counted, you know, any time that um, counts. And once you've had more than 19, it was, it was like people want to, to open credit. So because you're so worthy of, of credit, we're going to up your score 100 points. Whatever it was, then you start it was credit a credit card in the mail every other day. <laughs> yes, but uh, but that's something to be aware of. So I mean, not something you should be shooting for. No. But but it's actually good for your credit involved in all of this. Um. Okay. So the most important question that people typically think of when they want to get a travel credit card is, which card should I get? So if you do you think that you are okay to get a travel Fill it. Um, you are ready to go for it. Which card should you get? That the most important thing to consider with that is where you want to go. You should set your travel goals first, and that that should determine which travel credit card you get. For instance, from my perspective, if you think United Miles or United itself is probably the crappiest. Day. Airline you can fly on in the United States with the worst they, customer service. They break the cars too. <laughs> yes, yeah. um, they have amazing partners through their alliance. Oh, okay. And so, like when I flew to Thailand, um, so since my mom's from Thailand, I flew there for Christmas a couple years ago. United Airlines is one of the only airlines that still allows stopovers um, on your way to your destination. So the you can have stopover so, versus a layover. Exactly, a layover is anything under 24 hours flight and a stopover is anything over 24 hours okay so so they'll allow you to deliberately schedule a stopover uh -huh, without paying any more miles wow and so from here I would flew to Thailand through Europe because typically you would think okay fly to Japan then down to Thailand uh, but from here yeah, I chose I to go through saying. Europe <laughs> well <laughs> if you if you're from here, I flew to Rome, Salt Lake, to Rome. Mm -hmm. Stopped there for three days. I could have stopped there for three months if I wanted to. Really? Doesn't matter how long your stopover was, but Crazy. I had a job, so I couldn't miss, right, right. miss too much. But and I was by myself, and since it's a big European city, mm -hmm. I didn't know if I could afford too much more than that, and mm -hmm. I just wanted to get a taste of it. So I spent three days in Rome. On the way, yeah. Speaking of stop uh, layovers, um, there was an option from Rome to Bangkok that had 23 hours, which counted as a layover, didn't mm -hmm. count against my stopovers in Ethiopia. And because it was on Ethiopian Airlines, since they're a partner of United, mm -hmm. um, I got a free visa, free entry visa. They paid for my visa and they paid for my hotel since my layover was more than 10 hours. Really? Hotel, free shuttle into Addis Ababa. Like it was, wow. it was great. Yeah, and that then that was killer. a layover, so I had a stopover, a layover, went to Thailand. Then you can have two open jaws. So an open jaw is where you fly into one city and you fly out of another. So your oh, route, okay. you know, looks like a little Pac-Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I oh. flew in, flew out of Seoul because my parents, you know, Daphne and my mom, and oh, you didn't come. <laughs> yeah, so so my my family besides Daphne. Flew to Thailand and they did their their stopover in Seoul for a week. Okay. And I wanted to spend some time with them in Seoul, so I flew into Bangkok and out of Seoul. So I had my open jaw there. That's a wide I, jaw. I already used my uh, with Air Asia and all the discount airlines in, in in Asia. It wasn't that expensive for me to buy my own way between Bangkok and Seoul. Mm -hmm. So I spent some time with, with my family in Seoul. I have an uncle that lives there. Mm -hmm. And then on the way back, I had a layover assembled because it's so my favorite. How much clicking around did it take you to arrange this? Was so it, that's the thing. Was it really so with the layover, barely... you can't force a layover. You just have to take what they give you. Okay. So I just saw it, you know. Okay. Yeah, and, and I can show you this after. You can't okay. really see it on there. I have to okay. figure out the screen share, and maybe I'll, I'll do that someday. Okay. <laughs> maybe my next session. But I'll show you how to do this on United. Um, but you have to do the multi-city search. So if okay. it's for you, then you would search each segment one by one to see if they have the fight that you want, and then put it in all together. Now, is this on like the Matrix site or? No, this is on the United Airlines okay, on the, website. On the yeah, website. yeah, because okay. because they have specific rules and okay. you're using their miles. Okay. So when you're using a specific airline's miles, you're you only going to search your on, their on their website. Yeah, there's no other way to do it. Okay. So. 
Yeah. Um, so United, I had the layover in, in yes, Istanbul. Yes. And Turkish Airways also offers, they'll pay for your visa, and they'll pay for a hotel if your layover is over a certain time. Mm -hmm. And and they really want people to go into Istanbul. There is a metro, like a train station to the airport that goes almost all the way to the to the Grand Bazaar. And, and it's just a short, a couple of blocks away from the Blue Mosque and the Hagia Sophia. Mm. So you need to just like, Get off the plane, go into town. Wow. You know, you, you don't worry about traffic when you're taking the train. Right. You know, go see the museum and go see the mosque. You know, do a little shopping, eat the amazing street food there, and then come back. You're a brave girl. <laughs> well, actually, because I stopped in Rome, I made friends with people at church that happened to be in Istanbul at the same time. That oh, I was really? There. So I met up with them. Someone on my plane was traveling by himself in Istanbul, so mm -hmm. he followed us. He followed me to go meet up with my friend, and there are four of us that we just went around together yeah. all day. So I wasn't by myself. Okay. It's easy to find friends. No, no, no. I mean, yeah. no, no. I meant what I meant was eating street food. Oh, in eating. Country. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, right. we, we were at a restaurant, and we were ordering kebabs, and uh -huh. it was supposed to be really good, but they were taking so long to order my food, mm -hmm. and I made it back with an hour to my flight to the U.S. That's and, that's narrow for an international. Yeah. <laughs> typically, I make it with an hour, <laughs> but I've been lucky. Um, but they had a long line. You don't check bags either. No, I don't check mm. bags, so that helps. I never check bags though because I've had really bad experiences with fees, lost luggage. Not not lost luggage or yeah. fees. Actually, people stealing stuff. TSA agents or, or yeah, they yeah. do that. So. Sticky finger lot those. Uh, yep. So I try never to do it if possible, even though it's inconvenient. I'd rather have my stuff with me. Yeah. So. Yeah, so so United, that's why I say United is the best um, if you want to go to Asia because you're allowed to stop in Europe or the Middle East for your stopover or even Africa, any anywhere along the way, they won't charge you to have a stopover. Um, and their miles are pretty low. Um, and when I went to Palau, there's this island in the South Pacific called Palau. I paid for a flight to Taiwan because it was relatively cheap and I used only 15,000 miles round trip to go from Taiwan to I stopped in Beijing for two days and then I went to Palau and that included a full day. So I got to see three wow. places for 15,000 miles on United because of those rules. Yeah. Wow. So so you have to know the rules in order to take advantage of these things. But that's why I say United is the best for for Asia. If you want to go to Europe, I say American miles are the best sure. because it's not all the time, but on the off season. in Europe. So even if you're flying out of Salt Lake, Boise, Calabasas. Put miles in perspective for me. Like mm -hmm. 30,000 miles. Like, mm -hmm. What so, does that take to a crew? So good question. Um, typically if it's if it's on American Airlines, every time you fly you earn one mile per mile that you fly. United and Delta only give you miles based on the so they don't give you miles for flying. Mm -hmm. But as far as credit card sign-up bonuses go, mm -hmm. um, I would say never, ever, ever sign up for a credit card that gives you less than 50,000 miles. Okay. So it's totally doable with one credit card. So, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 40 is okay. And, and you know, I'd say, uh, So getting just a new credit research. card can get me a round trip to Europe. Yes, exactly. In the off season. In the but off -season. October is still, you know, good weather. Yeah, I wouldn't... Scotland. I prefer to go in a season when it's a a little bit gloomy mm -hmm. and the trails aren't choked for tourists. Right, right, exactly. And a lot of times when I found the cheap like monetary plane tickets, um, mm -hmm. when I've gone to like South America especially, mm -hmm. um, it's actually been perfect weather and mm -hmm. you don't have a lot of people. Like when I went to Machu Picchu with my friend Katrina, mm -hmm. we went in May, and that's kind of you get variable weather in May because. Into, or fall into winter, mm -hmm. but the day that we went, it was just not a cloud in the sky, there wasn't even fog over Machu Picchu, and there weren't that many people there, mm -hmm. so it was amazing. Wow. And when I went to um, I went to Patagonia, I found a ticket from LA to Santiago last March. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, yeah, it was 250 round trip, and so that was, that was the end of March, and I went in the very last week that they would allow tours down the Serrano oh, okay. River in Torres del Paine, the national park in Patagonia. Did you plan it that way or did it just work out that way? It just worked out that way because it was cheap and I just booked it mm -hmm. that, at that time. And uh, actually my trip went into April because I had one 
one floating holiday off for my work in mm -hmm. April. So I used it at the end of the trip. Um, so that was the last weekend I would possibly love me. I did. And it just was magic. Like it was supposed to be cloudy and rainy and windy. And it's supposed to be really hard to kayak. And I was a beginner. Yeah. Um, there was not a single cloud in the sky. And it wasn't windy at all. Like my guy had been out the week before. And he went with an experienced kayaker. And they went 100 yards down the river before they had to get the, the rescue crews. I got really lucky. So, I mean, the shoulder season, yeah, you're going to find a lot of those kinds of things. Sounds pretty nice. Yeah. Um, so, so, for Europe, I would say American miles are the best. Typically, on all the airlines, it's you'll find a ticket for 60,000 miles at the cheapest from the U.S. to Europe. Mm -hmm. um, but on American, 40,000 miles, none of the airlines offer 40,000 miles round trip. They have to take an American flight. Typically, you'll take an American mm -hmm. flight, but they do have decent partners. Uh, one thing to watch out for on American is if you fly on a British Airways flight and mm -hmm. you go through London, they'll charge you like $200 in extra fees just because British Airways charges a lot of fees. Mm -hmm. And if you just uncheck the box of British Airways... It might almost be worth it for the better service on British. And I honestly, I've never had a bad experience on American. Okay. On US, yes, now that they've combined, it's been okay. okay. Um, but American has been pretty good for me. Okay. But they also are partners with Air Berlin and Air Canada and a couple others. Okay. Yeah. Um, so you just have to be aware of what airlines you're flying there. Uh, but 40,000 miles, like, yeah. That's great. Like I yeah. can fly from Salt Lake City to, and it's only forty thousand. Wow. That's the same. Like any of those really expensive, like Venice, like mm -hmm. Liechtenstein, the, the you can fly as just forty thousand miles. So if there's somewhere crazy. really expensive, Greece, you can go to Greece for forty thousand miles. Like it's the same, whether you're going to London or Greece or Greece is in Poland. Solid. Why should it be expensive to go? There? <laughs> <laughs> hey, the euro is really low, and they kept the euro. So. <laughs> anyway. American for Europe, United for Asia, the Pacific, I would say Delta, because even though it's very rare to find, if you have flexible dates, it's very rare to find cheap flights on Delta. When I was looking at going from Salt Lake City to Palau or Saipan, the Northern Marianas in the South Pacific, places that typically cost $2,000 to fly, um, I found my, my uh, miles, 1,000 miles round trip. Okay. But, you know, you really have to be flexible with your dates, and you have to be willing to book it right then, because if you wait a day, you're not going to see that again. I'm, I'm a little bit familiar with that. I once saw Swiss Air tickets through Munich to, to not Munich, that's in Germany, Zurich, um, mm -hmm. through Zurich to uh, Scotland for $600, mm -hmm. and it just, you know, a kayak, that's all I knew at the time. And uh, I was like, oh wow, I could go cheap, and they were gone two days later. Yeah. Obviously. Oh yeah, uh, never wait two days for I a deal. I didn't know. Um, another thing with that, you, you weren't at my previous workshops, but mm -hmm. if you're buying a ticket within the U.S., it's federal law that the airlines have to allow you 24 hours to cancel your ticket without. So if you're so you if can, you're considering so you it, you can book it and think for 23 hours. You have to set an alarm or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do not forget. And then also do your research because different airlines offer that policy in different ways. Like American will offer a 24-hour hold. But they won't offer you to cancel within 24 hours. So, so if you actually booked it, your stuff. Yeah. Okay. So just do a little research. Um, what the airline policy with something like uh, one of those online travel agencies, OTA, like Travelocity or Expedia, mm -hmm. one of those. Um, they they will offer a 24 hour cancellation. Mm -hmm. So they'll do that for you. So how do you like those from India? They are delicious. <laughs> All right. Um, let's see, all cheap discounts to um, off season to Central and South America just because it's closer to the US. So that mm -hmm. I, I wouldn't pick a specific airline for that. Uh -huh. And you can get cheap deals, so I wouldn't use miles to go there. Whatever reason, South America doesn't hold a lot of drops. You know, I didn't I think that Spanish, I didn't think that until I went there, yeah. and I've just fallen in love with Central and South America. Like, I just keep going back there. <laughs> Been back there so huh. yeah, it's beautiful and the architecture is European in a lot of the cities too and it's, huh. it's surprising yeah. yeah you should go at least once anyway we noted. um another thing to to think about when when thinking about which card should I get and where do I want to go um, a lot of international airlines will offer credit cards to US and they have varied benefits so for instance British Airways 
Um, I got a British Airways credit card and I ended up having a 100,000 mile bonus. It was an old bonus, you can't really get that any anymore without spending like twenty thousand dollars a year. <laughs> so you know for us, you know, young that's not like feasible. people in the early part of their careers or, or students, like that's not gonna be feasible over here, right? Um, but these miles are very valuable. Um, they recently changed the rules with their partner airlines, so it'll cost more for certain partners, but mm -hmm. on certain routes the these rules still apply. They will charge you based on the distance of your flight, not what countries you're going to. So from Miami to a handful of, of uh, Caribbean countries, it's 2,500 miles. Interesting. Yeah, or 5,000 each way. It depends on. You gotta get to Miami first. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, it depends. Um, um it, it's distance based. Mm -hmm. So when I was in Lima, gosh, there are only like three, two or three airlines that offer flights between Lima and Cusco, and because that's a very popular tourist area, mm -hmm. you can't find tickets for under like 250 dollars round trip. Mm -hmm. And, but on my miles, are we talking like just just a couple hundred miles? Yeah, okay. it's it's a short flight. Yeah. It's over the mountains though, so I mean it's it's a little longer mm -hmm. in in hours versus mm -hmm. miles, but it's it's a short flight for sure. the price. Okay. Yeah, and uh, with miles, it was only I think it was nine thousand round trip per person. Okay. Yeah, so I used miles to pay for Katrina and I to get to Cusco because she'd been to Machu Picchu a million times. I didn't want her to go. You know, okay, just, just to do yeah. the same thing. So I gave her, yeah, I gave her the miles, but. Oh, is Cusco the, uh, the it's where you fly in the Machu Picchu. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so that's, that's the benefit of some of the international cards. But, you know, as a beginner, I would say just start off with one of the, the basic, you know, airline Southwest, United, American, Delta, the, the variable miles, like the points cards, like, what is it? Like Chase Sapphire preferred card is really good because they have benefits. Like, you know, at Sundance you get certain certain benefits like cutting the line to buy tickets in the morning and things like that. Um, you get entry into special events and things. But with them, you can transfer those points to one of like including Southwest, uh, United, I think even Delta, um, British Airways, Virgin Atlantic, Virgin American, or Virgin America. Um, with, with those types of cards, well, there's the Chase Sapphire Preferred, and then what's the other one? American oh, yeah, Express like, Membership Awards card. I don't think they'll let me convert it now. <laughs> yeah. um, if you have one of those membership rewards with American Express, um, those special Chase cards, so if you have an Ink Bold card, or an Ink or a Bold, one of those um, Chase Business cards, um, or a Chase Sapphire card, you can transfer to other airlines. Are you bored, Mom? No, I said, do we have that? <laughs> <laughs> you have the yes. Chase Inc. I do. Remember, we yeah. transferred it to United to get you to Thailand. Yeah. So those those cards are also good to have if you're not sure where you want to go, because then you can just transfer it when you decide you want to travel. I wouldn't recommend just getting any airlines cards because, like, oh yeah, I think I want Delta points, or oh yeah, I think I want I want. Um, this airline, but you have no goal in mind, like then you just have a point sitting there, yeah. And then there might be your sign up reward or sign up bonuses, mm -hmm. you'll miss um, different like once you get the card, typically you can't get it again, right? Like you can't get the bonus, right. even if you cancel it and wait, right? To, uh, as, as we move forward in time, um, increasingly the credit card uh, companies are not allowing you to churn cards, which means mm -hmm. you can't cancel it and get it again two years later, which is what you have been able to do in the past. Okay. Like any American Express card, if you've had it in the past ever, you cannot get the bonus again. Mm -hmm. I think American Chase is starting to do this. American Express, did they have heavy bonuses? I believe I recall my boss yeah. saying something. He took a trip with his with his you know wife and two sons to Australia almost entirely on Amex. Um, yeah. Um, uh, I think if if you there. wait, they will have high bonuses. Like okay. At one point in time, you could not get a Delta card with more than 30,000 miles okay. bonus. But they've increased it, and they started targeting people for 50,000 mile bonuses. And I've even seen there was one week where they offered 70,000 mile bonuses okay. to sign up for Delta. So, so like, 70,000 like, is the highest. So, yeah, two trips to South America. More than that, I'd uh, say. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Trip to Europe. Trip yeah, to yeah. But Delta on Delta, Delta jacks up the cost of their miles. Like for, for redeeming a lot. Um, in the miles wor world, they're known as Sky Pesos. 
<laughs> uh, I didn't make that up, so I'm not. I, that's not. That's just what people use in in the forums. And it's things. not even racist. Because it's jingo. <laughs> you have to be flexible in order to use to get the cheapest one. And actually, now Delta doesn't even offer a a uh, on, an online list of oh these are the cheapest rewards you can get. You have to just basically see what you can get. They okay. won't even tell you that like oh this is a good deal or this isn't. Okay. Yeah. Delta has just been really becoming a crappy airline. Yeah, well, screw yeah, uh, they're yeah. Stuff. You know, they have such a high quality product. I don't know why they're trying to to make it more I'm, like Ryan Airlines. I'm actually flying back to California. It's the first airplane I've gotten on in like a decade, I think. Um, in December, and I chose Delta because they had they actually had a cheap round trip. But you can't even pick your seats anymore in Delta. I could, and I wait. Yeah, you can. Um, on most fares, if for cheap fares, you uh -huh. can't pick your seat without paying a fee. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, I guess on certain routes. Yeah. Okay. You have to go to the agent. Mm -hmm. Through an agent, agent or pay a fee. Yeah. Pay oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, I yeah, did, my mom had to deal with that. I, I did yeah. upgrade to the Comfort Plus. Um, so that might oh, be Oh, because you're really I, tall. I, yeah. yeah, no, gosh, no. I'm 6'2", getting, yeah. getting crammed in the back of code. Narrow mm -hmm. compared to Oregon Airline, like we said comfortably, we don't have to pay. Exactly. Yeah, it's the, I mean, I don't care about the width yeah. of the seat, I care about the seat the, pitch. The, yeah, you know, the distance yeah, from the my distance, kneecap yeah. to my tailbone is long tight. enough that it's undoable. Yeah, um, they're very tight. But anyhow, that's, that's, another, that's another thing. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh my God, it's so, I like Oregon Airline. Yeah. Um, let's see. Even Alaska is good. So, so that, I hope that covers that. It's know where you want to go. So if you have certain travel goals, that'll help you, guide you as to which credit cards you should pick. Um, the next question that you should ask yourself with what credit card should I get is what type of points do you need? Do you need airline miles? Do you need hotel points? Or are you going to be staying in hospitals? Um, if, if you want to stay in a fancy hotel, look into getting hotel credit cards as well. And different cards have different bonuses. Um, and some cards, those even if they have annual fees, the typical they will typically give you either enough points for a stay each year that you renew your card, or just a free stay. Like IHG Intercontinental, they do Holiday Inn and stuff. You can get um, a free night a year at any of their hotels, okay. and it's usually the basic room, but still like still in a nice I went, hotel I flew, in, nice. I flew into Georgia to go um, to my friend's wedding in May in, in Alabama and Auburn, and I just stayed in Hilton Head um, on the beach. And it wasn't like the nicest hotel, but it was a great location. And it, it was free. It, it was just my free sex. night. No, not at all. Yeah. And they had, oh, it was beautiful. Yeah. Great. It comes in handy. Um, so yeah, airline miles, hotel points, or if you need a flexible option and you're not sure if you're going to need hotel points or miles, then, then get one of the Chase Sapphire Preferred American Express card. Or even the SPG, American Express has uh, the Starwood Preferred Guest cards. They own like the Westin hotels and a little fancier end hotels, but their points are worth like you can transfer. Their sign up bonuses are typically twenty to thirty thousand points, but you can transfer them to airlines at like one and a half to one point seven five per point to a mile. So each Starwood point oh, wow. is worth like one point five. That's great. Delta miles or something. So so Starwood Preferred Guest is also a good option if you want to transfer. Um. Let's see. Just as a just as a couple of friends I met working while I was working in San Francisco for a few years, um, and we made it an annual tradition to go ice skating in Union Square and then ride the elevator of the West of St. Grant on Union Square to the top so that you know over uh -huh. until the year that they installed a key card system, you couldn't do it anymore. <laughs> you know, you can do that in LA. Austin Bonaventure yeah. downtown, and they have really fast elevators, and they're all glass on yeah. the exterior. Yeah, no, that's of the exactly building. that's yeah. exactly what it was. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I love that that hotel in LA. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Moving on. <laughs> so again, the next point. Yeah. Don't ever go for the first offer you see. Sometimes the first offer you get is the best. But most of the time, it's not. Um, sometimes it's good if it's a targeted offer. Uh, okay. Sometimes they'll mail you something, like something and it's higher than what yeah. you can get online, and okay. it's higher than what they've offered before. Um, but if you really want they the, really the want card, that sweet, sweet interest money from you. Yeah. Yes, they do. 
And our bonuses change at the time of the year. Usually around like Thanksgiving or Christmas, you'll get the high bonuses again. Okay. And then they'll go off after you know early January. You'll see them again around April, and then you might get a few throughout the summer. But end of the year, I suppose that's the because highest. they're competing for people who are looking to get new credit to pay for Christmas. I think so, mm -hmm. but I mean, there's no no one's ever speculated. I've never read anything about. Yeah. But uh, but I mean, they vary. So sometimes you'll get a, a an offer, and it's like, oh, this is really good, and everything online is less than this. But if you have seen that there has been a higher offer in the past, I would wait. <laughs> like United, they have had sixty thousand mile bonuses in okay. the past. Or if you get, if especially with Chase, um, I get airlines. If you get a bonus, and then you see like. A month or two later, it gets higher. There's a higher offer. You can always message them, say, "Hey, I wouldn't have signed up for this card if I had known that they were going to have a higher offer." And a lot of times, they'll just points. yeah, they'll give you the difference. So that's a good thing to remember okay. with credit cards as well. So keep track of that. Be the squeaky wheel. Yeah, yeah. Or I never heard to ask. Yeah. The, the worst they can do is say no. Yeah, but do your research. Don't go for the first offer you see. Mail you is a targeted offer and it's really high. Like the seventy thousand point mile uh, Delta offer was only mailed to a handful of people. Okay. Um, a lot of times, uh, those offers are mailed to you if you're a member of their frequent flyer or loyalty rewards program, um, but you don't have their credit card. So a lot of people don't know that okay. you don't need to have the credit card to earn miles. Like you don't right. need to sign up a credit card. Yeah, you just need to, or even having an account with a zero in it will, will qualify you for higher bonuses on credit cards. Huh. So I would recommend everyone just signing up for all possible loyalty programs. Um, make sure you keep the, the passwords and the, the usernames and the excuse me, account numbers somewhere where you can remember them and draw on them. Just do the same one for each one. Yeah, but a lot of times, like on Marriott, I had signed up for a Marriott um, account, um, but I had never once used it before, so it had zero points in it. And my, I went to New Orleans for a conference when I was at USC for the uh, American Planning Association, and they were overbooked. And they were going to turn me away, but because I had their their loyalty rewards program, um, they allowed me to store my luggage there for free. And they, oh, and the other thing that's amazing. Just walk okay. <laughs> well, you can do that at a lot of hotels really? too, actually. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they'll do it for free. You just give them a little tip. You know, at the end. Oh, okay. But you don't have to if you don't want to. You don't that's, hold the, it for free. that's that's the understood practice. Yeah. I mean, I do five bucks for storing your luggage mm -hmm. while you're touring around the city on a, yeah. on a layover. That's yeah. That's cheap. So uh, what happened at this Marriott was my parents had paid for the hotel. I had to see the credit card. A lot of times airlines will do this too. Mm -hmm. They want to see the credit card you use to pay for it. Mm -hmm. And they said there are no exceptions except I was a Marriott Rewards member. So they were going to give me time to get my parents' card scanned, and they let me check in earlier than I would have been allowed to otherwise, huh. and things like that. And then the night that they were oversold, they sent me to another hotel with a free taxi fare, like wow. they paid for me. Yeah, like you just get these benefits, and it puts you a step ahead of everyone else. That's it's not a whole member. other little, yeah. little world. So, so the people that do have status are at the top, where you yeah. get the best service. The people that just are members, you still get a higher level of service than everyone than else. Walking around yeah, the exactly. And with like intercontinental, every time you check in, even if you just have an account, they'll get apple and a bag of chips or something like that. Like it's kind of fun. Yeah, and you get the better rooms sometimes that way. Like it just helps. Just so sign up for whatever you can or whatever you're gonna use. Okay. Um, let's see. Oh, um, as far as finding, doing your research and finding higher credit card bonuses. Um, sometimes you can find links to better bonuses on the travel blogs and forums. Um, an example is that British Airways card. So I'm going to explain a little bit about how I got 100,000 miles. Okay. Um, I was just figuring well, out, was really new to this forum that I love called Flyer Talk. So I'm kind of a lurker there. So I have status and I use all the information I go there, but I never comment. And then like your status on the, the forums are based on how much you comment. I just, I'm a lurker. <laughs> so I will just read through all the forums. You can find so you have to know where to go. They have information on destinations and things to do, but they have a section on miles and points. Mm -hmm. and they have a section on like cheap airfare and things like it's that. It's like basic internet form navigation. Yeah, except they also their main page is just all travel news, and it's kind of oh, messy. so it's a little hard to navigate. Yeah, okay. yeah. So, and um, if Most you. Can 
um, straightforward. And when I was starting to figure it out, I was reading this forum on British Airways points because I was thinking of getting a card. And then I came across this thread that was like a thousand comments long about how if you pretend to buy a ticket, you know, and like, you know, I, I do this all the time just to see the total cost. This is before the, the FDA instituted, or FAA. FDA, FAA, the federal government, <laughs> whichever instituted the law that shows that the airlines cannot say, oh, this ticket's $200, and it's really like 9000 or 900 because of the tax. They have fees. to show you the entire yeah. price. Tax so this was before they had to do that. So like you would like pick your flights and go to the very end, and, and it says, how do you want to pay? And then sometimes they'll say, oh, your, your price will be this much if you sign it for the credit card. Okay. You click that, and you sign it for the credit card, and then saying, oh, Oh, go back and pay for the, the as if you were booking a flight. They thought you were about to uh -huh, exactly. pay for a ticket. And so I got the link that way. And what it was was um, you had to pay the annual fee the second year, but the annual fee was waived the first year. Mm -hmm. You got 50,000 miles after your first purchase the first year, and then another 50 the annual fee the second year. So that was like really amazing. Come that on. was British Airways. And now you but but yeah, you never know what you can find. <laughs> yeah. Um, be aware of spending requirements when you're signing up for credit cards. So some cards have higher spending requirements than others. And be very aware of what that is. So what that means is a lot get points. Like um, when they say, oh, get 50,000 miles for signing up for the Southwest credit card. Um, it's 50,000 miles after you spend $2,500 in the first three months that you have the card. And the first three months starts from the day that you applied, not the day that you got and activated the card. Okay. So that's kind of tricky. If you're, if you're not someone that spends a lot of money and you want to, you have to pay very, pay very close attention to that. And then you will only get the points after the close of the business or of the, of the credit billing cycle period. billing period that you met the requirements on. Okay. Um, and sometimes, you know, they're just going up and up with time. Um, there used to be a lot more cards where you got, you know, 50,000 points after your first purchase. But now it's like after now, you spend X number of dollars. Yeah, the cheapest I've seen nowadays. Yeah. The U.S. Airways card was after first purchase, but they don't have that anymore. Yeah. Yeah, so be very aware of, of the spending requirements. Do, do not apply for a card you can't afford. Mm -hmm. um, this means be sure that you can meet the spending requirements. Make sure it doesn't have, like, Without like, spending more, you're have already planning on $200 spending. annual fee, like some yeah. annual cards. So, so that's the other thing I have here. Benefits come with the card. Mm -hmm. Know if they're waiving the annual fee or not. Um, not all cards waive the annual fee with the bonus. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you also get extras like lounge access, um, annual bonus points. Sometimes if you I use remember the your points, story about the about the lounge at the, I don't remember. Oh, United, yeah. yeah, in in Texas somewhere. Yeah, they thought I was 16, and they're like, you have to be 18 or older to get in here. Was it more? <laughs> Here. And I was like, why not? They're like, well, can we see your ID? Like, yeah. They're like, you have to be 18. Like, yeah, I'm 25. So, <laughs> so, so yeah. And those, I mean, those women were like astounded, but whatever. <laughs> it was really funny. Funny, but irritating because I want people to take me. I am. Yes, exactly. Gosh darn it. Exactly. <laughs> and you know, everyone says, "Oh, I'd like that to happen to me." Not when it happens all, all the time. The time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, um, sometimes you get bonus or a bonus on the card, like it, they'll waive the global entry fees. Mm -hmm. Although those typically have the higher annual fees. Um, American Airlines. This is really good to know. American is one of the high, the best cards I think out there right now. Yeah. Um, if you have American Airlines cards. They will allow you to get a mileage discount on certain domestic routes. So each month they'll have like 20 or 30 cities. So it's a good chunk. Oh, wow. Oh. Twenty-five thousand miles. Yeah. So that that brings it down to 1750. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. 17,500 miles. That's a good discount. And um, so just having the American card. Like, I think I'm going to pay my annual fee on that one next year because it converted from my U.S. Airways card, and, mm -hmm. and that's a good discount. I've used it. Yeah. I went to Jacksonville. Now, for points accrual, aside from sign-up bonus, 
is, I imagine they all do it somewhat differently, but is it like, you know, a mile per dollar spent on the car? See, so or? that's my next point right okay, here. Okay, that Right there. See, you can't just read this right now. <laughs> no, the next point is, um, so each credit card, you should know what the spending bonus categories are. So that's exactly okay. what you were talking about. Know which categories will get you two or three or even five times bonus points. So the Chase Freedom card, if you have the Sapphire Preferred or an Ink card, um, you can transfer your Chase Freedom points to those cards and then transfer that to United Airlines or Southwest or whichever. Um, and the, the Freedom card has 5% bonus categories per quarter of the year. Okay. So like right now, it's a gas. So through the end of September, from like July, I think it was. And you said 5%? Did you know? Yeah. Okay. So that means that every dollar you spend, you get five points. Okay. Every dollar you spend on gas, you get five okay. extra points. So, so that's great. And um, a lot of cards will have like two times points on travel and dining, and sometimes they'll just change up the fees or ch change up the bonuses and say, oh, between these months you'll get you know two to three. Times more. Anywhere to transfer the points, so I just have a ton of freedom. Um, points. A lot of people just get cash back on the Freedom Card, but yeah. but knowing the value of United points, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, 15,000 miles got me, you know, so far when yeah. I was in Southeast Asia or, wow. or in East Asia and the Pacific. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not going to get cash back on these points because I can get instead of getting $200 cash back for 20,000 points on Freedom, the Freedom Card, um, if I can transfer it to United. I could get a plane ticket that's worth six or seven hundred dollars instead. Wow. So, so you have to, you know, weigh so your much, options. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And because I travel a lot, I prefer to do that. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely makes sense. Um, another thing that helps um, is know that know whether you can pay your mortgage, your rent, your student loans, or car payments with a credit card. If you can. Do. Then, then do if you're going in this if you direction. Have the cat, yeah. But only if I would you have recommend. The cash to pay yeah, all, so. I would only recommend yeah. doing this like to hit the spending bonus in your beginning. You need on every month because yeah. that gets hard to pay off, or, or attempting not to pay it off. Not pay it off. Before. Yeah, especially in big amounts. But that's a good way to just you know hit your spending bonus in mm -hmm. one or two months, and then yeah. and then stop using the card as much. But yeah, that's just an option to think about. And there are other options. Um, it's called manufactured spending, where there are certain like cards you can use. You can pay a card. It depends on what your definition of ethical is. So this mm -hmm. is up to the individual to decide if you are willing to do this. Mm -hmm. But you use your credit card to buy a gift card or a certain kind of card that mm -hmm. you can use to pay off your credit card in the end through a cycle it somehow. Sounds, it sounds similar. It's it's exploiting a loophole. I don't think there's anything necessarily unethical but, but about it. Right. No, different people will have different feelings about it, of course. Right. I remember reading a story about a man. This program is no longer active, but he uh, he exploited a program by the U.S. Mint. Um, oh, whereby to buy they money. wanted to increase circulation of Sacagawea dollars, and so they were willing mm -hmm. to sell you dollars at a dollar to you for free. Mm -hmm. So he bought tremendous sums of Sacagawea dollars and just went and deposited them in his bank account yeah. to accrue miles. And he he broke a million miles doing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um because yeah. he would he had enough revolving credit that he could he could order, you know, thousands of Sacagawea dollars a month. Mm -hmm. And he kept doing it until the mint. Oh. I remember so I remember I think the mint uh US mint Discontinued the program before his credit card company tried to close the loophole. Yeah, no, uh, that and actually that happened just closed. before I got into oh, really? that, that loophole was closed just before I got into the the mm -hmm. Miles um, blogs, and I, I remember reading about that about people being upset that that had closed. Yeah. yeah, so I know a lot of people that have done that. I wasn't able to, but I mean, honestly, Figure it's a loophole. It I don't think that's unethical <laughs> <laughs> for from my perspective. So I would have done it if I could have. Yeah, but I mean. That's up to you if you want to find a way to do That's that. Million Mile Secrets out. has a lot of information. Mm -hmm. They don't tell you, like, they just give you the information. So if you want to read more about that, um, use Million Mile Secrets. Okay. Um, let's see. The uh, spending bonus categories. Another, a few things at the end of my, my list here. Uh, about interest rates. So credit cards, uh, a big part of when you do get approved for a card is whether or not you get approved for it with a good interest rate. Mm -hmm. um, so this is off of Million Mile Secrets. It says a score of 650 is better than a score of 550, 
a score of 750 will get you access to lower interest rates than a score if you're a score of about 760, you don't necessarily get a lower interest rate for having a higher credit score. So there's no real need besides bragging rights for having a super high score. So you want to aim for mid-700. Um, and you probably don't want to apply for miles cards unless you have about a 700 or more. So if you have that kind of score, you're definitely good to go. Um, 750 if you're um, If you're buying a house, so this might apply to some of you out there. I'm just going to read this uh, from Million Mile Secrets again. It says, buying a home is likely the single largest purchase in your life, and it will bring you far more happiness than applying for a few credit cards. Credit inquiries stay on your credit report for two years, good to know, and lenders will review your credit report when you apply for a house. Times and blogs are filled with comments from folks who've managed to get house loans despite applying for lots of credit cards. Good for them, but I prefer to be more cautious. I don't want to risk anything that would either cost me more in interest or not get me approved for a loan. I worry about unpredictable external events which could disrupt credit markets and cause lenders to be extremely selective. Mm -hmm. So I severely limit the number of credit card applications in the run-up to a loan. Um, I can't tell you the magic number, but it could be reasonable to apply for, say, two or three cards over the two years prior to a loan, uh, though avoid them one year around one year before. It probably isn't reasonable if you have 30 new cards in two years prior. And I know yeah. people who have that. Wow. Yeah. Um, signing up for loyalty programs, this is what I just discussed a little bit earlier. You don't need a credit card to earn miles. Uh, one of the best ways to earn miles, um, besides signing up for loyalty programs, is to use the shopping portal. So this is a good way to get started. Um, so the shopping portals are, you can just Google like any airline, like, um, American Airlines Advantage, because their, their loyalty program is called Advantage, so you want uh, American Advantage loyalty uh, shopping portal. And it will take you to, you know, I think it's advantageeshopping.com. And then from there, anytime you're going to make a purchase on a big website like Macy's.com, ModCloth, um, any, a number of, uh, not Amazon, Amazon's not connected to any um, miles, it's unfortunately. A shame. I love, I love it. Yeah. Uh, but if you can find the same product that's on Amazon on another website, typically they'll offer free shipping and other deals. But if you click, so get what you want in the cart, click the link, sign in and click the link from the shopping portal just before you you buy the product. So you're going to buy something you were already going to buy anyway, and you get seven points per dollar that you spent on that. Oh, Even wow. if you wow. don't use the miles credit card. Wow. Yeah. Like, I don't know. AdvantageEshopping.com. That's one I use a lot because I, I love American like Airlines. Two or three letters in the game. Yeah. <laughs> so you log in here. Sometimes when you log in, it'll even give you a big, bigger bonus than what it was. So ModCloth is something I just made a purchase on. So I just typed in ModCloth. You can type in search for the store. Here it says right now it's two miles per dollar. Okay. Or eBags. So when I was searching for a new carry-on backpack because I didn't want to wheel something around mm -hmm. because they charge you for the size of your wheelie bags in mm -hmm. a lot of airlines internationally. Right now, 12 miles per dollar. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. wow. And if you're going to buy an Osprey bag, you know, they have a lot of those outdoorsy stores on here. Mm -hmm. 12 miles per dollar for a hundred dollar, you know, backpack. Yeah. That's 1200 100, miles. Yeah, right 100 miles. Yep. So if you're going to buy something anyway, this is a good way to start earning okay. miles. And when you start earning miles, um, a lot of times the, the companies will send you targeted bonuses based on that. So okay. you have a better chance of getting a good sign-up bonus um, when you start to do things like that. Um, let's see. Yeah, and when you're a member, again, they might just target you anyway just for being a member. Uh, keep track of when you signed up for a credit card and when you meet your spending bonuses. Um, this will also help you if you plan on just getting the bonus and canceling the card. Um, you, If you cancel within six months, one, it's bad for your credit score, right. um, very, very bad for your credit score. And two, they can take your miles back. Okay. Yeah. So I would recommend keeping the score until the annual fee hits. You can cancel it within like after 11 months if you can keep track of that. For me, I've never had a problem uh, waiting till the annual fee hits. As soon as it hits, so the sooner the better. You call them and say, "Hey, actually, I didn't fly on. You know, I canceled my Lufthansa card recently." Like, I haven't flown on Lufthansa even though I got all these miles. I haven't been able to use any of the benefits on the card. And 
just buy one to go see. Good to have, just because you keep your, your credit history yeah. longer. Do you get to you keep, keep the your, points when you cancel the card at a year? You keep the points, yeah. Okay. Yep, you keep the points. Points are yours, no matter what. Okay. Um, unless you cancel within around the six month range. Right, right, right. Mm -hmm. okay. um, but the other thing is that uh, when you have a card with a company you have another credit card on, um, you can transfer your credit limit not all of it, like maybe they typically leave like four or five hundred dollars that they have to have on the card in order okay. to cancel it. But like Lufthansa was Barclays, so I transferred, you know, the four thousand extra credit limit that I had mm -hmm. onto one of my arrival cards. So that one increased my credit limit or the same credit limit. So canceling that card okay, had so very minimal. Okay, so transfer impact. a portion of your available credit. Yeah. Off and create put a new it card to with it. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, exactly. Not a new card. They just put it on an existing credit limit. So okay. if I had, like, already had the yeah, card. I already had an arrival card. Let's just say I make up this number of like six thousand credit limit mm -hmm. on an arrival uh, Barclays card, mm -hmm. and then I had four thousand forty five hundred on the Miles and More Lufthansa card. They had to have five hundred dollars to cancel the card, so they moved the four thousand extra card because I had zero. I didn't have any spending on it. Mm -hmm. They moved the four thousand credit limit. Onto the six thousand dollars, okay. and then allowed you so to ten thousand. Yeah, exactly. Okay. And I and I got ten, a ten thousand credit limit on this one card now, and that keeps my credit ratio at exactly. the same level. Mm -hmm. So when you cancel the card, it has a minimal impact on on the your, uh, payment history, but your, your, uh, your debt amount to, owed. Yeah, yeah. Debt to available credit ratio. Yes, exactly. So that's another good trick to know. Balance to available mm -hmm. credit ratio. That's what I'm. Yes. Um, another important thing to know is if you're denied for a credit card when you apply online or if you receive a pending approval notice, um, you can always, always call the reconsideration line. And if they don't work with you, hang up, call again. It's all the luck of the draw. Maybe you'll get one yeah. as well. So I, I would call, if they don't work with you the first time, call once or twice more at least. Um, Sometimes they just need verification, like, oh, we're not really sure that you've actually lived here more than a year. Okay. You can be like, yes, I did. And they're like, okay, and they'll give you the card right away. Um, sometimes it's as easy as that, and sometimes they were gonna deny you based on that, and they didn't want to call you. Okay. <laughs> you know, so so it's always good to recall or call the reconsideration line immediately or the next day after you apply. You can Google that and find those numbers online. So that's a good thing. Um, we already talked about credit score info. Um, yeah. So I think that's all that I had prepared. Do you have any questions? <laughs> no, that was that was seemingly exhaustive. <laughs> yeah, it was about an hour. <laughs> um, no, that was that, no, a, that's lot. a ton of great information. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. So I'll post it on YouTube. Yeah, that's online. That's, that's fun. Any no questions? Um. Mom, you have a question? Yeah, Delta is like uh, vanity is high. Used to be like um, they used to pay ninety five dollars. A year and you get a free companion ticket. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now they do away with that, so it has to have it has to be it has to be hundred fifty dollars. The annual fee. Mm -hmm. To wow. get uh, that the is, ticket. But, but it's, it's worth a lot like, uh, from Honolulu. Yeah. Oh, for a companion ticket, hundred fifty dollars. Yeah, so I, that's why we still have it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, is that you didn't fly here on that? No. Because you, you have to book thirty days. I was, was going to ask yeah. you, should we? Because I I apply for. Um, United mileage. I haven't used a mile. I just I pay for the MP, I haven't used anything for that. If you cancel the card, you keep the miles. Yeah. What do I do? Should I do with the United miles? Yeah, because I'm just fly to Thailand. I'm just spending <laughs> United miles. You visit your dad. Uh, yeah. My mom's here. <laughs> yeah. So I haven't used it yet. So yeah. it's, it's, you want to be on the video? No. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. So I can ask you, should we cancel? You can cancel the card so and you still have the miles. Yeah. Yeah. So if it cancel the card, I still have mile. When I buy the purchase a ticket, can I use my purchase a ticket? Mm -hmm. so you know, okay. Yeah, that the way. credit cards work separately from the miles. Oh. Because so the credit how, card the gives credit you the cards, miles, but yeah. the miles exist in a separate place. Exactly. Uh, Unless yeah. you do something banks within the first like six months yeah and I don't know if it's exactly six months but I know that after six months you're safe okay. <laughs> yeah they just cancel it yeah just, just... Mm -hmm. so here how it works is the banks purchase a block number of miles from the airlines 
Mm. And then the banks choose how they want to distribute the miles. Mm. So they, they base like their value of you know new customers and what interest they think they're going to get from you, mm. um, and they offer you miles based on that. So and sometimes if you haven't used your car in a while, or just if they're trying to generate more spending on their account, you'll get something in the mail that'll say, oh. Just because they have extra to work with. Okay. Yeah. So the banks actually purchase the miles. I, I had no idea it worked. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they have nothing to do with the airlines. I mean, you do have to attach your miles account to the bank account. So I mean, they do have some yeah. ability to work with the companies, but they're completely separate. Yeah. Uh, Once they're yours, they're yeah. Yours. You said that the Delta it changed the policy instead of earning money, but now when you purchase, when you fly, you fly. So I have a lot of money. Should I use mine to? To pay for my trip home, or? using miles hasn't changed yet on Delta. They they're going to move in this direction. I'm ninety percent sure it's in the next year or two. So where where the mile the cost of a flight will be based and miles will be based on the monetary cost of the flight, which is sad. Not distance. Not distance. Mm -hmm. Like right now, like once I flew to Savannah and. It was it's going to be monetary like, cost fluctuates far more yeah, sharply. Yeah, than so it, for, it works well for last minute flights right now because if you're going to fly to Savannah from Salt Lake City last minute, it's like six to eight hundred round trip. Actually, probably like eight hundred round trip for a last minute flight. But, but yeah, round trip. But it's twelve thousand, tw like twelve thousand five hundred miles each way on miles still. Oh. Sometimes. So yeah. um. So let's say flying to Honolulu one way is let's say six hundred dollars. So it did not match like miles per dollar to the not right now. Okay. So so in the future in Delta, if it's six hundred dollars from Salt Lake to Honolulu, mm -hmm. they're gonna cost they're gonna charge you like sixty thousand miles. But mm -hmm. but currently it's okay and it only affects monetary flight. So spending is the same as it was before okay. this year. It's gonna change soon. So what would no. we best use all the miles? For the I time? would say that. Oh, maybe yeah. I should get all the miles to go home then. Well, save it for Thailand, Mom. <laughs> but I, I so I I'm very against using miles on airlines that fly internationally uh, um, on domestic really? tickets. Yeah, unless it's like the American, or if you're really gonna save, like you know. So that was it to use. My uh, domestic. Well, domestic for Honolulu, flight. the thing is, it costs more to fly from here to Honolulu than here to Europe on miles on Delta. Yeah. It's so weird. Because yeah. like, what is? Because Hawaii is a tourist destination. Right. Obviously. Even though you know we from live here, there. From SLC, <laughs> so, if you get a non-stop, yeah. which I don't know if is, I don't know if that's even a thing. Salt Lake to like Honolulu okay. on Delta, there's a non-stop. Okay. Mm -hmm. non so that's what six hours air time. Yes. It's almost About seven. Yeah, six and a half. Little. Depending on which cost, you're flying. That costs more than the to Europe. Depending on the time of year, I mean, it varies. Supply and demand. It's not just. It's not yep. just. You know, we charge you the cost of operating the plane mm -hmm. plus you know whatever profit margin. Right. Whatever we can extract. From you have the Capital One Three Sixty. I do. I love uh, that card. Did I tell you, you told, about that? You told me something about it, and I completely forgot. They waive all annual, not annual fees. They waive all um, ATM fees when you're abroad. Oh, that's right. Yeah. yeah. So I can so, just go. I can use any ATM mm -hmm. I want. And even if the ATM charges you a fee, they they'll, will waive that. Fee. They'll uh, they'll they'll pay mm -hmm. it for you. Just hit OK and they'll waive it. That's awesome. Uh huh. So when you go to foreign countries, you should have. To I just pull out what I need. Just any yeah, ATM. Yeah. Because I want. that's the danger that of traveling. I don't have to carry you don't cash know. Yeah. You don't know how much you're gonna. Travelers checks, which I don't think are mm -hmm. a popular thing anymore. Once people realize that yeah. the that American Express can just say like, eh, we don't feel like it when you want to cancel and get your money back for a stolen check. Yeah. Um, um. See, that's that's a good thing. Is sometimes when you're exchanging money, you don't know how much you're gonna need in a certain country, yeah. and then you end up with all this extra, and you lose money yeah. exchanging it back. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um. This way, you just pull out, you know, uh, twenty bucks worth at a time, depending on the country. Yeah. So like they'll so they'll waive ATM fees and the like exchange fees. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. That's cool. Then you have to be careful of what you can. Yes. Yes. Mine yeah. is a debit card. Actually. Yes, it is that a debit one. card. This particular card. Yes. Yeah, so it's Capital One Three Sixty. Great debit card to have if you're traveling abroad. I'm not getting paid to say that. I don't have any sponsors. 
You said uh, debit card, but the mm-hmm. have a money in that file. Yeah. 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 It, it used to I be mean, ING. You remember my ING yeah. account? It converted to Capital One Three Sixty. It's the mm. same account I've had since two thousand eight. Yeah. I went, so. with, I went with it because I got really sick of um, spending lines. No one uses ATMs that much yeah, anymore. I don't. I don't use ATMs much either. But I, I just got sick of the. Somehow I let them convert my checking account at Chase to something that had a fee if I didn't have direct deposit. Oh was, no, they do that when you're when you're I not a student. I was between jobs doing temp work, and I was just like, uh, you know, I didn't have direct deposit. And I got sick of it, so I was like, you know what? I'm gonna go to an internet-based checking account. And I'm yeah, Capital One. <laughs> Zero viewers right now. <laughs>